on this Ascension Day. As you can see, today I'm recording outside, um, sitting at our table on our little strip with the trees and the beautiful sky in the background. I'm conscious of the disciples who climbed a hill with Jesus and saw him ascend into heaven. And um, so it seemed fitting to be outside. I'm going to light my candle as we remember Christ with us. Today I'm going to invite us to share in prayer together, to, to pray, to remember, to wonder. And so you'll see the words to follow on the screen in front of you. Just join with me as we pray. O oh Lord, open our lips. Praise and honour and glory and might to him who sits on the throne. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my mind be acceptable to you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's bring to God our confession, and so let us pray. I invite you in this time of prayer to bring to God those moments when your vision of who God is has been too small. When Jesus has been limited in your mind by expectation and anticipation.
You may want to consider those times that you have clung to what is familiar, reluctant to trust God to take you into the next step. Lay down the burdens you carry at the feet of the risen Christ. Friends, hear the words of grace. Our sin is forgiven. Thanks be to God. The prayer of the morning. Blessed are you, Lord our God, giver of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. At the opening of this day, you call us out of darkness into your marvelous light. Blessed are you for ever and ever. Amen. The psalm that is set today for today, Ascension Day, one of them is Psalm 47, and we shall share that psalm in song. taken from 2 Kings, chapter 2, verses 1 to 18, and I'm reading from the contemporary English version. The Lord takes Elijah away. Not long before the Lord took Elijah up into heaven in a strong wind, Elijah and Elisha were leaving Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, the Lord wants me to go to Bethel, but you must stay here. Elisha replied, I swear by the living God and by your own life that I will stay with you no matter what. And he went with Elijah to Bethel. A group of prophets who lived there asked Elisha, Do you know that today the Lord is going to take away your master? Yes, I do, Elisha answered, but don't remind me of it. Elijah then said, Elisha, now the Lord wants me to go to Jericho, but you must stay here. Elisha replied, I swear by the living God and by your own life that I will stay with you no matter what. And he went with Elijah to Jericho. A group of prophets who lived there asked Elisha, Do you know that today the Lord is going to take away your master? Yes, I do, Elisha answered, but don't remind me of it. Elijah then said to Elisha, Now the Lord wants me to go to the Jordan River, but you must stay here. Elisha replied, I swear by the living God and by your own life that I will never leave you. So the two of them walked on together. 
Fifty prophets followed Elijah and Elisha from Jericho, then stood at a distance and watched as the two men walked toward the river. When they got there, Elijah took off his coat, then he rolled it up and struck the water with it. At once a path opened up through the river, and the two of them walked across on dry ground. After they had reached the other side, Elijah said, Elisha, the Lord will soon take me away. What can I do for you before that happens? Elisha answered, Please give me twice as much of your power as you have given the other prophets, so I can be the one who takes your place as their leader. It won't be easy, Elijah answered. It can happen only if you see me as I am being taken away. Elijah and Elisha were walking along and talking, when suddenly there appeared between them a flaming chariot pulled by fiery horses. Right away a strong wind took Elijah up into heaven. Elisha saw this and shouted, Israel's cavalry and chariots have taken my master away. After Elijah had gone, Elisha tore his clothes in sorrow. Elijah's coat had fallen off, so Elisha picked it up and walked back to the Jordan River. He struck the water with the coat and wondered, Will the Lord perform miracles for me as he did for Elijah? As soon as Elisha did this, a dry path opened up through the water and he walked across. When the prophets from Jericho saw what happened, they said to each other, Elisha now has Elijah's power. They walked over to him, bowed down and said, There are fifty strong men here with us. Please let them go look for your master. Maybe the spirits of the Lord carried him off to some mountain or valley. No, Elisha replied, they won't find him. They kept begging until he was embarrassed to say no. He finally agreed, and the prophets sent the men out. They looked three days for Elijah, but never found him. They returned to Jericho, and Elisha said, I told you that you wouldn't find him. Here ends the lesson. You probably know me well enough by now to know that I love the ancient prayers of the church, hymns of the church. And so we're going to share in the Benedictus, the song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. Through the holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us, to show mercy to our forebears and to remember his holy covenant. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to read this morning from the New Testament, from the Acts of the Apostles. And I'm going to read from Acts chapter 1, reading from verse 1 through to verse 11. In my earlier work, Theophilus, I dealt with everything Jesus had done and taught from the beginning until the day he gave his instructions to the apostles he had chosen through the Holy Spirit and was taken up into heaven. He had shown himself to be alive to them after his passion by many demonstrations. For 40 days he had continued to appear to them and tell them about the kingdom of God. While at table with him, them, he told them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for what the Father had promised. 
It is, he had said, what you have heard me speak about. John baptized with water, but not many days from now, you are going to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now, having met together, they asked him, Lord, has the time come for you to restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know times or dates that the Father has decided by his authority, but you will receive the power of the Holy Spirit, which will come on you, and then you will be my witnesses, not only in Jerusalem, but throughout Judea and Samaria, and indeed to the earth's remotest end. As he said this, he was lifted up while they looked on, and a cloud took him from their sight. They were still staring into the sky as he went, when suddenly two men in white were standing beside them, and they said, Why are you Galileans standing here looking into the sky? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come back in the same way as you have seen him go. To heaven. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Now, I, for once, and it, it really is unusual for me, have chosen to change the Old Testament lesson that was set to the King's reading that you will have heard earlier. And I did that because as I prepared for today, for Ascension Day, I really wrestled with what this might be about. Um, it kept me up at night. I read, I reflected, I had my points lined up, I tossed them aside. This is a difficult day to perhaps wrap our heads around what does it mean? What is the good news? The only uh, similar kind of theme in, in the scriptures is that one from Second Kings, the story of Elijah taken up into heaven in a fiery chariot. Um, Paul does speak about take, being taken up into the third heaven, but we're not sure what this is all about. There are all kinds of theological themes that you may want to wrestle with. There are themes around the nature of Jesus. Perhaps the gospel writer Luke wanted us to be very clear as to who this Jesus was. This the sense of the divine, that Jesus sits at the right hand of God, that you can't write him off. Maybe the gospel writers wanted us in telling this story to really realize that a period of Jesus' ministry had come to an end and now something new was beginning. But as I read that lesson from Second Kings, I found myself wondering about transitions, changes, the sense of passing on the mantle. And there are a couple of themes in the two stories of ascending to heaven that I, I want you to notice. I invite you perhaps to wonder about the reality of relationship. Elijah was accompanied by Elisha as they made their way through the land of Israel to the place of ascension. Jesus had been accompanied by his disciples. And that journey was one of friendship and mentorship and discipleship. There was a sense in which these moments of ascension were culminations of a long journey together. The being taken up into heaven 
for both Elijah and for Jesus, were not solitary events. They happened in the, the space of relationship. I wonder if the gospel writers had in mind that injunction from Elijah to Elisha that you'll only receive my power if you see me go up into heaven. And the fact that Elisha received the mantle of Elijah as he saw him ascend in the fiery chariot. There's definitely something in the Ascension Day texts around the disciples now becoming the apostles. The reality that those who had followed, Elisha and the eleven who, had, who were with Jesus, the disciples who'd followed Jesus, they were now becoming the active servants of God at this time. The power of the teacher now passes to those who have followed. In the Ascension Day readings, there is definitely something of the passing on of the mantle. The transition for the apostles from disciple to apostle. For Elisha from, from student to prophet. The one who will lead God's people. Ascension Day has something significant around transitions. That movement from recipient to giver. From follower to leader. From disciple to apostle. There's also something in both of these readings today that invite me, and I hope you, to reflect on waiting in between spaces. Um, in the Old Testament lesson in 2 Kings, after Elijah has been swept up to heaven, into heaven, and Elisha comes back and tells the story, the other prophets go, oh, I'm not so sure about this, let's go and check. And they disappear off for three days to try and find Elisha. And there's a kind of in-between space between Elisha's leadership as the prophet, Elijah, and Elisha's time. That waiting for something new. And in the Ascension Day story, you have Jesus' instruction to the disciples, go and wait in Jerusalem. Don't leave until the Holy Spirit is given to you. Wait. Something new is going to happen. And a new way of, of being in the world. Wait. And so I'm wondering about your journey with God. Your journey with Jesus. Are you perhaps in the place of companionship and journey, still learning, still longing to be taught more, but anticipating that things are going to change, feeling perhaps inadequate for what lies ahead? I wonder what you need to say to Jesus about that feeling, that sense that something is coming and I'm not quite ready. Perhaps you are aware of a shift, a transitioning, a passing of the mantle that your own life and journey shifts from one role to another, from disciple to apostle. Perhaps you are in this time of lockdown becoming aware of new call, new invitation. wonder what you need to say to Jesus about that. Or maybe you are waiting. Waiting for God's infilling to give you the strength to, to do something new, 
to be different somehow. Perhaps you're waiting, not sure even what that will look like, not sure what to expect from God, but you know that you've passed through something and something new is coming. Ascension Day is really, for me, about transitioning. It's a, it's a watershed moment. What has gone before is no longer what is coming. Perhaps that's what this time of COVID is. For us as nations, communities, churches and individuals. Perhaps this time is a time when we see what has been familiar disappear and we wait to see what lies ahead. May God grant us grace and hope and love and faith that we might journey into the new time together. Amen. Let us share in our prayers of intercession. Let us offer our prayer with all God's people through Jesus Christ our Lord, whoever lives to pray for us. We pray for the needs of the world. We pray for the church. We pray for all in trouble or distress. We pray for all who make a new beginning today. God of compassion and mercy, listen to our prayer. May what we ask in Jesus Christ, your Son, be done according to his word, who said, Ask, and you will receive. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. To you, merciful God, through your Son in the life-giving Spirit, be glory and praise forever. Amen. We say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Lord our God, as with all creation, we offer you the life of this new day. Give us grace to love and serve you, to the praise of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.